Hey guys, this is Stephanie. Welcome back to my channel. So in the video today, I'm going to be discussing a question that was asked from a subscriber in regards to if I can make a video discussing this. So what I'm going to be talking about today is just how can you prepare yourself for your clinical rotations? So you finish your didactic year, right? And you're about to go into clinical rotations. Definitely, I have to say, remember my experience for this, this was extremely nerve wracking because I felt like I didn't know anything. And especially during clinical rotations, I felt like I didn't know anything. But it's so interesting how you grow as a provider, as a student, as a PA on the first day of your clinical rotations in comparison to the last day of your clinical rotations. So that's really, really interesting. So how do you prepare yourself for your clinical rotations? One of the things I do have to say that as a student, you have to make sure that you take initiative, right? For every rotation you do, take initiative. Take initiative, that's the key regardless if it's a rotation you're not interested in. For example, if you're not interested in psychiatry and your heart is like in emergency medicine, still put in a lot of effort and show interest during that rotation. Because who knows, you might like that job and you might get offered that job. Especially if your school is located by where you live, you know, or you're planning to maybe stay in there after school. A lot of my classmates that rotated during certain rotations and they did really well during that rotation. They impressed the doctors that they were working with. They usually get offered jobs. So always make sure that you keep that in the back of your mind, regardless of what rotation you are in, even though you're not looking forward to it, you might like it. You might change your mind about it. And not only that, you might get offered a job. So make sure that you're always on your best behavior and you show interest. So what does interest mean? Ask questions. Like if you're curious about something, ask questions. Don't be shy. Asking questions really shows that you're interested in whatever the doctor is doing or what the patient has or etc. right? And what I did before I started rotations is that I bought myself like, it's called a Simvivo. It's a little fake like skin where you're able to suture because I wanted to make sure that I knew how to suture well. And to be honest with you, now that I've graduated from PA school, I haven't sutured in a long time because my last rotation was the burn. I didn't suture a lot during that rotation. So I have to practice suturing because you want to make sure that you know your suture skills well, just in case, you know, they might call you to be a suture, whether it's during your family medicine rotation. I definitely was not expecting that. And one day they had asked me if I can suture and I was so nervous. So make sure you buy yourself like a little, I'll put the link below, it's called Simvivo. And it's basically like a little fake skin. That's one of the best ones that I found because I bought some on Amazon and eBay and the plastic is just really bad it's really crappy and whenever you put the needle through it just rips really easily and of course it doesn't resemble real skin but i think the closest one that resembles real skin and it's tough right and it has it feels like that subcutaneous tissue when you're putting that needle through it's going to be simbivo which is s-i-m-b-i-v-o which i will add the link below i really recommend these so if you can definitely prepare yourself and practice just with sutures, every type of sutures, especially during your surgery rotation, especially during your ER rotation, definitely. And then also for your rotation, even in OB-GYN, in ob -GYN, you scrub in a lot of surgeries. So some of the doctors will let you suture. So make sure that you practice once again, ob -GYN, surgery, ER, and even family medicine. Like I said, I had one case of family medicine. So out of the eight rotations that you do, that's four of them, like half of them require sutures. So I really recommend Keep practicing with your sutures before you get in, you start your clinical rotations. Especially if you're going to start the ones like ER, right? Pediatrics, who know, they might put you in a pediatrics ER. And a lot of the sutures that I did during my ER rotation were kids. And you know, kids will not sit still. And then especially if the, the parent sees that you act like you don't know what you're doing, then of course you're gonna be very nervous and they're gonna ask if someone else can do it or it'll just make the situation already even more nerve-wracking because you're nervous, especially if it's your first suture. So practice, practice, practice with your sutures is definitely one of the keys that I recommend. Another thing that I did is that I always made sure I would read books that were pertinent to whatever the rotation was because it not only helped me out studying for the end of rotation exams and for the pants, but also helped me prepare for the rotation itself. So for example, I did an elective rotation in ENT, so um, ears, nose, and throat. And so I ended up buying a book 
on ENT and I made sure that I read it before I started the rotation and then during the rotation. And it really helped me out in regards to understanding how and why instruments are used, how to use certain instruments, um, how to, for example, read what the instrument's telling you, etc. So that's why I really recommend if you can prepare yourself with a certain book specific for that rotation. For ob right? Um, surgery, uh, ER. ER, I, there was one that I read, which was like the Atlas of ER. It's basically how, like, the, it's a bunch of pictures. And I really liked it because it really shows you what to look for in a physical exam when a patient comes in and what physical findings are associated with what. For example, like your oval cellulitis, right? Your blowout fractures. Um, the other one is like your intracranial hemorrhages, right? The raccoon sign. So I really recommend you to prepare yourself if you can with books. Uh, another one that I recommend is definitely practice your physical exam skills. I struggled a lot with my MSK, my musculoskeletal portion of the physical exam. And I know I made a fool of myself over and over again during ER because in ER you get a lot of injuries like ankle injuries, right? They fell and they twisted their ankles, leg injuries, etc. So it's really important that you know how to do those physical exams right, findings especially on anything that's MSK. So I really recommend if you can, practice with your physical exams. Practice, practice, practice. I know when I didn't have someone to practice with, I had a teddy bear and I would practice on a teddy bear. And that teddy bear is what I used to prepare for my OSCEs, right? And then also to prepare for play, clinicals, clinical rotations. If I was not using that, Bear, I try to, of course, try to use a live person um, because it's really important that you, you do really well and you practice as much as you can with your physical exam because your physical exam will tell you so much about a patient in regards to you know, what they're coming in for, what's their disease, etc. So practice, practice with your physical exams. Those sutures, like I said, buy if you can any book that's related to whatever rotation you're in, even if it's your elective rotation, right? Um, if it's dermatology, if they have a good dermatology book, um, find one and then just make sure that you familiar, your, familiarize yourself with certain rashes, right? Um, so once again, if you can, buy any books that will help you not only for that rotation, but also for your pants and then your end of rotation exam. So I really, really recommend that. Also during your rotations, Always, like I said, make sure you show interest. Make sure that make sure that you show up in time, right? That's really, really important. Especially like during, for example, your surgery rotation. If a, if a doctor tells you the surgery is at 6 a.m., right? Get there at 6 a.m. Even if he doesn't get there till 7 or 8, you're there at 6 a.m. Okay. Because once again, they also write you your reviews at the end of the rotation. And that's part of your grade. And depending on what program you are, you know, it's a certain percentage of your grade for your, that rotation. So also keep that in mind. Another thing that I really like is those pocketbooks. I'm not sure if you've seen those pocketbooks on Amazon. They have them for a lot of the rotations. So when I have one for the emergency medicine, so they have emergency medicine pocketbook. It's really helpful. And I would just take this out, out of my white coat and then just make sure I look at, for example, what would I order for? It's a kind of like a quick search and it tells you what to order for a patient that's coming in with appendicitis, right? Or a patient that's coming in with pancreatitis, like what labs to order, what do you expect to find on the physical findings, like what's the best treatment. It'll even give you dosages for certain treatments. And these are usually catered to the rotation that you're in. So like they have an emergency medicine one, they have one for internal medicine, which I also have, which is orange. They have one for pediatrics and they're super small and compatible. So they're, you're totally able to put them in your pocket. So I really, really recommend that also, that's one of the things that I bought, brought with me every day. Another thing that I did is I bought a little pocket encyclopedia book for pharmacology because it has a lot of medications in there and you can flip through it super duper quick and it'll tell you the medication name, it'll tell you what's the dosing, you know, side effects, etc. So I really recommend those also. And then of course, stethoscope, I'm sure you bring that. Uh, wherever you go, even though certain rotations you wouldn't use it as much. For example, your psychiatry rotation, I, my doctor never had a stethoscope, right? But just make sure that you have that with you. 
Also, for, for example, your pediatrics rotation, you have to do a lot of calculations in regards to the medications that you're going to be dosing. And that's usually based on the weight of the patient versus like adults, right? It's different. There's usually a set dose for that patient. For children, you have to calculate that. So for that, I had an app. It was called PD. I'm going to actually add the link below for the app. I don't remember the name. I ended up purchasing it. It was about $5. It really helped me out during that rotation because I would just put the child's weight and then it would calculate it for me depending on the medication that I was um, dosing. And then especially my pediatric doctor during that rotation, he was like super rogue on um, ensuring that I calculate the medications correctly. So those are some of the things and some of the recommendations I gave just how to prepare yourself for your clinical rotations. I hope this video is helpful for you guys. And then one last thing before I forget, make sure you get nice scrubs, nice scrubs, and make sure that your scrubs are ironed and your white coat is ironed and you're clean, right? You're clean. Don't show up to your clinical rotation looking like you just, you didn't even shower, right? You like smell, your hair's all over the place, um, you know, bad breath, etc. Make sure that you're always neat, your scrubs are neat. I mean, I would see some, students that would have like a bunch of dandruff on their scrubs. No, make sure that you look good. You're presenting not only the program you're, you're attending, but your PA yourself. And that also takes into account also like your presentation. And um, just make sure that you look good, especially on your first day, first impressions as well. All right, guys, as always, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any comments or anything like that, comment below. If you have any feedback, comment below also, or any suggestions on future videos I can make for you guys. All right, guys, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.